One of the most common questions I get in the comments is whether a 2 inch eyepiece is better than a 1 and a quarter inch one. At first glance, this question seems a bit trivial, but the more you think about it, the more interesting it gets. This is why in this video I decided to explore this topic in a bit more detail and hopefully by the end of it, leave you with a better understanding of eyepieces and how they work. So without further ado, let's get this show on the road. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to Video Observatory. As you all know, a telescope works by gathering as much light as possible and then redirecting it to an opening either to the side or at the end of the optical tube. From there, an optical device made out of a carefully assembled collection of lenses takes over. This is the eyepiece. To make things easier to visualize, imagine this light captured by the telescope as a cone or focused beam of light traveling inside the optical tube, getting reflected, refracted or both. It starts off as being the size of the aperture of the telescope and then getting progressively smaller and smaller in diameter until it reaches the eyepiece. This is much simplified, but you could say that the larger the aperture of the telescope is, the larger the diameter of the light beam will be when it reaches the eyepiece. This means that past a certain aperture size, a larger hole on the side or at the end of the optical tube is needed to make use of the full width of the light beam. So eyepieces need to have a certain barrel size as well to take full advantage of the whole diameter of the light beam. By the way, after traveling through the eyepiece, the beam of light exits through the top lens of the eyepiece and enters your eye. The diameter of the light beam as it leaves the eyepiece is called exit pupil and is measured in millimeters. The human eye can typically utilize a 4 to 7 millimeter wide light beam, but this is highly dependent on age and how fit the eye is. Ok, now let's get back to the 2 versus 1 and a quarter inch comparison. To make things easier for manufacturer to design and make telescope accessories and eyepieces, four different standards for the barrel size of eyepieces were defined over the years, out of which two are the most popular today. First, we have the 0.965 inch or 24.5 mm size. In the mid 20th century, many entry level and smaller telescopes were designed to use these eyepieces. This size was a standard at the time, but has become less popular in modern telescope designs. But adapters are still available today to allow the use of one and a quarter inch eyepieces with telescopes that have a 0.965 inch focuser or the other way around. The second standard is the one and a quarter inch size or 31.75 millimeters. Eyepieces with this barrel size are the most common and widely used today. They are suitable for most telescopes, including beginner and advanced designs. Next comes the 2 inch or 50.8 mm size. Larger telescopes, especially those with larger apertures, often have focusers that can accommodate 2 inch eyepieces. These eyepieces can provide a wider field of view and are commonly used in advanced astronomical observations. And finally, we have the 3 inch or 76.2 mm size standard. Eyepieces with a 3 inch barrel diameter are considered specialized equipment, typically associated with very large and or advanced telescopes, often found in professional observatories or research institutions. There are eyepieces with other sizes as well, but these have very specialized use cases and usually aren't available to amateur astronomers like us, which is why I won't list them here. For relevance reasons, I also focus on one and a quarter inch and two inch eyepieces for the remainder of this video. All right. Now that we know a bit more about the different eyepiece size standards, I would like to pick up where we left earlier. After traveling through the telescope, the light beam reaches the eyepiece. The diameter of the barrel of the eyepiece dictates how much light the eyepiece has to work with. 
So based on this, one would be inclined to say that a 2 inch eyepiece is better than a 1 and a quarter inch one, because it will let in more light and thus be capable of producing higher quality images. Well, while this is certainly valid, it doesn't tell the whole story. The main reason for this is that not all eyepieces can utilize a 2 inch wide beam of light in the first place. To understand this, we need to take a look at what factors dictate the size requirement of an eyepiece barrel. On one hand, there is the parent field of view of the eyepiece. The wider the parent field of view, the greater the need for an eyepiece to feature a larger 2 inch barrel. This is because as the width of the field of view increases, the diameter of the field stop of the eyepiece also gets larger. The field stop being the metal ring inside the eyepiece's barrel that physically limits the field size. And on the other hand, we have the focal length of the eyepiece. The longer the focal length of the eyepiece is, the higher the probability that it will need a 2 inch form factor. So it's mainly the relationship between these two aspects that in general dictates what size an eyepiece needs to be. Let me give you an example. A 24 mm pen optic with an apparent field of view of 68 degrees manages to barely squeeze everything in a one and a quarter inch size format. By comparison, a 22 mm Nagler with an apparent field of view of 82 degrees needs a 2 inch wide barrel even though its focal length is shorter than the panos. Another way of putting this is that keeping the focal length constant, a 2 inch eyepiece will generally offer a wider field of view compared to a 1 and a quarter inch one. So to answer the initial question from the beginning of this video. A 2 inch eyepiece isn't necessarily better than a 1 and a quarter inch one, because the diameter of the barrel in itself isn't an indicator for a higher image quality. It is rather a consequence of the different optical characteristics that under certain combinations simply require more room inside the housing of an eyepiece. All this means that you shouldn't buy an eyepiece solely based on its barrel size, but rather compare stats like focal length, apparent field of view or eye relief. There are a couple of useful tools out there that will allow you to simulate the views of a certain eyepiece in combination with your telescope. This will give you a rough idea what to expect in terms of field of view before making a purchase. I will leave a link in the description below. Also, think about whether a wider apparent field of view is really necessary. For example, a short focal length eyepiece used for high power planetary observations are perfectly good even if the apparent field of view isn't as wide. 60-ish degrees are in my opinion perfectly sufficient since planets will appear relatively small in the field of view, no matter the magnification. So in my opinion, a 100 degree eyepiece wouldn't make much sense in this case. It will show you the planet in the middle of the field of view with a lot of uninteresting black around it. Wider targets like the moon or deep sky objects like nebulae, on the other hand, will profit greatly from a wider apparent field of view. They also don't require a ton of magnification either. So a long focal length 2 inch eyepiece would make much sense in this scenario. Also, keep in mind that good 2 inch eyepieces tend to get not only more expensive than 1 and a quarter inch ones, but are also heavier which might upset the balance and stability of your astro setup. In my opinion, a good starting setup would be to get one short and one medium focal length one and a quarter inch eyepiece for high and medium power observations and one two inch eyepiece with a longer focal length for low power observations and roaming around the night sky. If you are interested in some eyepiece recommendations for different setups, I encourage you to check out my other video on eyepieces I recently uploaded. I'll leave a link in the description below. Anyway. That's been it for now, I hope you'll enjoy this video. Let me know what eyepieces you enjoyed the most observing the night sky with. I'm very curious to read your comments down below. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next one.